We are here with Seba Tahir, who's the author of An Ember in the Ashes and also the recent release, A Torch Against the Night. I asked some of my staff who are huge fans of your book what they wanted to know. And of course, across the board, everyone wanted to know the inspiration behind the series. Sure. Um, so the series was inspired by a couple of different things. The first was um, where I grew up, which was in the Mojave Desert. Um, I'm sure that you'll see the sort of um, you know clear inspiration there. The, the first book does take place in the desert. But more than that, um, when I was growing up, I lived in a pretty isolated town, and I really grew up feeling like an outsider um, and like I didn't fit in. And so um, that feeling of being sort of a misfit and not not quite fitting into the world um, uh, around them is, is, you know, that Elias and Laia feel is very much inspired by my own childhood. Um, but Laia's story um, and her relationship with her brother um, and, and sort of her mission throughout the first two books was inspired actually by a story I read. Um, I used to work at the Washington Post as an editor, and one night I read a story about women in Kashmir and South Asia and how they were um, dealing with family members, particularly male family members, uh, brothers, fathers, sons, taken by local military forces and thrown into prison um, with no clear indication as to when these these family members would um, be released or what they had done wrong. And I remember reading that and thinking, wow, that's I can't believe that's happening in our world. World. Like it sounds like something, um, you know, um, ancient times or something from, mm -hmm. you know, like a dystopian world. Um, and so uh, I use that as sort of the jumping off point for an ember in the ashes. One of the things that comes up a lot when people talk about your books is how authentic and real your characters feel. Could you share some tips for how you go about creating characters? Do you have a plan beforehand? Do you get to know them as you write? Um, I have a general sense of who they are beforehand, but I really mostly get to know them as I write. Um, and they still surprise me, um, you know, quite often, just like I think real people do. And I think that for me, that's the trick is treating my characters like real people. If I know everything about them, um, then they're not very real to me. Um, they sort of become something that I've manufactured. Whereas if I don't know all of their secrets um, and I'm still figuring them out, and you know, I know, I know the, all of the basics, and I know sort of the obvious things about them. Um, but I don't always necessarily know what they're capable of. Um, then that allows me to sort of explore them and understand them as the reader explores them and understands them. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that allows me to kind of have, have a bit more of an authentic experience in writing them. Yeah. Um, have you found that you have a character that you found was particularly difficult or particularly easy to write? Um, none of them were particularly easy. Um, <laughs> um, I Darn. would say that Elias was particularly difficult. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, is not a character um, overtly with whom I have much in common. He's a guy. He's very um, unafraid. He's physically uh, very powerful. Um, but I found, interestingly, that um, I actually probably have more in common with Elias internally mm -hmm. than I do with, with either Laya or Helene. And that allowed me to, um, you know, sort of um, harness his character and understand who he was and what he was. But it took a lot of sort of close examination, which can get uncomfortable because if a character resembles you, um, then, you know, you've yes. got to sort of think about like, oh, gosh, is, you know, am I really that angsty or you know, whatever. Right. Um, and so, uh, but he was very difficult to write, I think, because of the self-examination involved and just because he was so different. There was a lot of interview viewing of warriors involved with, with getting Elias's character right. Um, so that, that made it a little bit tough. Can you think about something important that you've learned as a writer from starting this series till now? I think that, you know, in terms of craft, um, I've learned that I don't really fit into either the camps of um, somebody who plots, you know, sort of known as an right. architect, um, that's what George R. R. Martin calls them, or into the, the category of somebody who, um, who sort of uh, uh, just mm, doesn't really plan, which I, he, I think George Martin calls um, a, a gardener. I kind of am a combination of both, and it took me a long time to realize that, and that was, um, uh, I wish I had known earlier because I would have been gone easier on myself, I think. With my first book, I sort of gardened and then plotted and then gardened and then plotted. 
Um, and with my second, I was like, no, I can't do that this time. I have to really just plot the whole thing out. But I lost a lot of the magic when I did that. So that, right. and, and a lot of time. And mm -hmm. I ended up, you know, wasting months sort of plotting it out and then realizing that, hey, you know, it's part of the, the beauty of, of, of when, when I enjoy writing is in figuring out what the story is as I go. Mm hmm and then in terms of just, you know, what I've learned that's not craft related, um, I think just to remember that everyone within the writing community has their own story. Um, and I think uh, a lot of times, um, you know, we can uh, uh, look at another writer and think we know what's going on with them, but that's certainly not always the case. And it's, I think, better to... Um, get to know people rather than just assuming you know them. <laughs> right. Um, do you have, if you're looking at either book, do you have a scene that you just feel like, wow, I, I nailed it. I'm really proud of that scene. I went in there wanting to do a certain thing and accomplish it, and I did it. I don't have a scene that I feel that way about. Um, I have a scene that I was proud of myself for finishing just because it was hard to write. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I got it right, though. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm, I say that with honesty, not with, like, right. you know, false modesty. Um, and that is, um, there is a scene between Elias and uh, Marcus in the first book. Um, and it's after the third trial. And they're sort of having um, an interesting moment of connection. And it was very, very difficult to write that scene because I had to um, I had to make myself sort of look at things through Marcus's eyes mm -hmm. and feel some level of empathy for him. And that was really difficult for me because he's such a big jerk. Right. Um, and so I was, um, I was happy that I actually finished that scene because there are many times where I, I probably wrote and rewrote that scene, like, I don't mm -hmm. know, 50 times. There were so many times where I, I wrote it and I was like, okay, this is fine. You know, but I knew it wasn't. Right. I knew it wasn't right. And then I had to go back. And so I, I got to a place where I was like, okay, I think this is as close as I'm going to get um, to what it should be. And, you know, probably now if I rewrote that scene, I might write it slightly different. Mm -hmm. But um, at that time, I'd gotten as close as I was able to to what I was hoping for. So I was just relieved I finished it. <laughs> Are you someone who, as you're writing, do you make yourself cry? No. You're not. I don't. So you, you have a heart of stone towards your readers is what you're saying. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say it's a heart of stone. I just find that like I don't I make myself I mean I d no, I don't really make myself cry. Um I, I cried at the end of my second book, but uh -huh. it was because I was relieved I had finished it. Right. Um and it was a big, you know, big moment for me in that regard. Yeah. Um but um but no, I don't I don't really make myself cry. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a time, but mm -hmm. come cold, cold-hearted. <laughs> you just put cold your characters monster. in peril, and then you just watch them spin, twist in the wind. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. I do feel sorry. I should. So I should amend that. Okay. There are many times where I actually get pretty down. Yeah. Um, for a few days mm -hmm. because I've just done something quite horrible, and I feel really sad. Yeah. Um, and and kind of low for a couple of days because I feel like I've hurt my character and I'm mm -hmm. like sorry you know whoever um, there was a couple of that couple of times where that happened in book two especially. So for you, what comes first, the title of the novel or the plot? The plot definitely comes first. Um, my three-year-old helped me come up with the first title of the book. Nice. And my publisher helped me come up with the second. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very much sort of a, a two-person effort on both both times. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then I have a, an idea for a third one in my head, but I don't really know if it's going to stick or not. Right. So that one's just sort of, you know, but that's that one I thought of, um, but we'll see. And you have great titles. You also have great covers. Um, oh, what thanks. It, what are your favorite things about the cover as it relates to your vision of the story? Probably the font treatment. I feel like the font of the cover is sort of gritty and harsh and kind of car if in the first book it's sort of carved from the rock um, mm -hmm. on both the paperback and the hardcover. Um, and in the second book it's sort of carved from the stone um, on, on the, on, on the hardcover. And I think in both cases, um, it reflects the kind of the grittiness of the book itself. What part of the writing process then do you enjoy the most? Do you enjoy the thinking about the idea beforehand, the drafting or the revising? It really changes per book. Um, I think that 
for the most part, I enjoy revising mm-hmm. because I feel like that's where I do all my actual writing. Yeah. The, the creation of the story is actually pretty tough for me. I struggle with that. I kind of like that first draft. I have a really hard time with it. It probably takes me longer to do my first draft than anything else. And then I revise. Um, and that it takes me not quite as much time, but I feel like I do so much more with the writing. Mm-hmm. What would you say is your superpower? I can consume just an incredible amount of chocolate. That's an awesome um, superpower to have. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Like I can, I can eat quite a lot of chocolate. Um, I think that's pretty, pretty legit superpower. I'm also pretty good at remembering lyrics. Terrible at remembering bad band names um, and album names. Like right. you know, people will be like, um, "Oh, you know, you like whatever, you know, Bob Dylan. Um, what's your favorite album?" And I'm just like, I don't know. Like, you know, <laughs> but I can, I can sing you all of you know, knocking on heaven's door. Yeah. Do you have a a favorite book or series or more than one, if you want to, that you've read recently that you would love to recommend to our readers? I have two. Um, one is called the, 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 the books of Pelinor. The first book is called Mm -hmm. the naming and it's by Alison Croggan. And she's just released sort of a companion novel to that series, um, called the bone queen. Um, and so I really loved that, uh, that series. And then another series that um, I've really, really enjoyed recently is um, uh, Lee Bardugo's um, Six of Crows and Mm -hmm. Crooked Kingdom. I just finished Crooked Kingdom a few weeks ago, and I thought it was really, really wonderful. Um, And then actually a book that I would like to recommend, even though you didn't ask for a series, you asked for a series, but this is a standalone. But it's it's just a remarkable book, um, and I'm going to be spending the next week probably talking about it like a crazy person. And that's called um, The Sun is Also a Star, and it's Mm -hmm. by an author named Nicola Yoon. And it's um, a beautiful, beautiful book, a beautiful um, love story and story of sort of strength and and, um, and uh, focus and, um, you know, who we are sort of at our core and who we are for the people who we love. And it's just a really beautiful story, and that's out November 1st. Okay, fantastic. We'll have to keep our eye out for that one. What's up next for you? I'm just working on the third book in the series. Okay. Yep. Is there a place um, within the next few months where readers can find you? Are you going to be doing events in your area or doing any touring? I'm going to be at Y'all Fest in Charleston, South Carolina on, um, I think it's November 12th. Yep, November 12th. And I'm going to be um, in... Uh, oh shoot it's an Oakland store on the 26th of November but now I'm forgetting its name but I'll figure it out and I'll, it'll be up on my website <laughs> Okay. Yeah. so people can head to your website and see where they can find you to yeah, get their definitely. books, get their books signed and meet you in person great Yeah. can you tell us anything, any updates about the film um, yeah so the um, film option is at Paramount um, and I actually um, just met with the execs there a few days ago and everything is going really great um, they are um, just checking out the script right now and um, you know hopefully um, there will be probably some drafts and you know revising and stuff that happens because that happens with scripts just like it happens with books and then hopefully we'll have a final script and we'll go from there but it's it's pretty exciting that's awesome. Fingers crossed for that. I can't wait to go to the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> We're still a long way from I, We that, are, we <laughs> are, but is it wrong that I'm already shopping for outfits or is that okay? No, no, that's not wrong at all. <laughs> totally not wrong. Thank you so much for joining us here at YABC to talk about uh, Torch Against the Night and all of your writing advice and just a little behind the scenes look. We really appreciate it. Readers, if you want to check out down below the video, you can see a link to Subba's site and you can also see information about her books. So check those out if you haven't already read them. Thank you for joining us and everyone have a great day.